Welcome back to Tampa Explained. Today we are going to talk about the suburbs just to the west of Tampa proper. Here we go. I'm Sam and thanks for coming by the Living in Tampa channel where every single week we make videos about what it's like to live and move to the Tampa, Florida area. If that's something you want to follow along with, don't forget to subscribe. Also, I am a licensed realtor in the state of Florida, so if you have any real estate specific questions, don't hesitate to reach out. My phone number and email are right there on the screen and then in the description down below. Okay, suburbs. The West Suburbs just on the west side of Tampa proper. I mean, really, this area is Tampa and that's Something we've talked about in other episodes, we kind of talked about what is up with the county, like when it's incorporated and when it's unincorporated. That was actually video two of the Tampa Explained series, linked right above. But now let's talk about the West Suburbs. Some of the nice suburbs, the nicest suburbs of the Tampa area, in my opinion, for a lot of reasons. But first of all, let's talk about what are suburbs. I was watching another video recently I, I do watch my competitors' videos. And another real estate YouTuber talking about the Tampa area, and he was talking about the suburbs, and he was talking about pretty much the metro area as like Tampa proper, and then everything else in the entire area is suburbs. I live in one of those suburbs, but it, where I live actually feels almost like a different town. It doesn't feel like Tampa. It doesn't feel like a Tampa suburb, even though it is part of the Tampa metro area. But these ones, these ones to me feel more like Tampa. And I'm talking about this area on the map right here. So this area is really kind of defined by the towns that are in it. Citrus Park, Carrollwood, Northdale, Lake Magdalene, Keystone, West Chase, town and country. I mean, Lutz is kind of in this, but since Lutz is going to be lumped in with the North suburbs, I'm going to save it for that. So really West Chase and Citrus Park are kind of the center of this area with some of these areas being just as popular and town and country being way bigger. This area has a unique feel. You can see the boundary on the map here, really starting at the edge of Tampa proper with Carrollwood and Lake Magdalene kind of making the east side of this area and bordering right there along Tampa proper. On the west side of this area is West Chase and Town and Country and Keystone. And that west side actually goes to the edge of the Hillsborough County. Just on the other side of that is Pinellas County and a lot of kind of conservation land in between the two counties. The population of this area overall is a little over 250,000 people with Town and Country actually making up 87,000 of those people. Town and Country has been a very fast growing town in the state of Florida. It's been one of the fastest growing over the past 10 years. And a lot of these towns within the West suburbs are fully developed areas like Carrollwood and West Chase. And, and you see some links up here to some other videos for those areas that we've talked about before. These are master planned areas that are very intentional, that have the very typical suburban neighborhoods, some gated, some not. And we'll go through these areas one by one later in the video. And just a reminder, the Tampa Explained series here, we focus on four main criteria. Number one, proximity. Number two, size. Number three, style. And number four, cost. So we are going to boil down the whole west suburb area into that criteria. So starting with proximity, as you look at the map here, this area is really central to the entire metro of Tampa. And since it's so central, it's really close to downtown and really close to the airport. But for being in the city of Tampa area, it's also really close to the beaches without being over in that other county. So from all of these areas, you can get to the beach in 30 minutes or so. And proximity to shopping and universities and theaters and everything in between is very, very accessible because of all the access to downtown, to other areas of Tampa, even West Shore, which is really just on the edge of this area, and the airport, which is right in that West Shore area. As we get into size, which is our second criteria, 
One of the first things I noticed was how the population compares to other areas in the Tampa area. It's about the same as St. Petersburg. But when we look at the parts of the map, when we compare the sizes of these areas, we, you can see how much bigger this West suburbs area is. And that allows for homes to be spread out quite a bit more. It allows for quite a bit more conservation area, more parks, more entertainment, more of all of these kind of features. Okay, number three, the style of houses and of kind of the development in general in this area really ranges from the 1960s into the 2000s. So a lot of this, the northern part of this area, the Carrollwood area, and the southern part of this area in town and country, a lot of these areas were developed in the 60s and 70s. And then the central areas here being really West Chase and some of Citrus Park developed in the late 90s and 2000s. And Keystone kind of being a mix of all of those things. When we work our way around the map here in a minute, we'll talk more about Keystone and some of its complexities. It's it's a really cool area. All right, now the fourth criteria is cost. And this area is not cheap, but it's also really close to the city. So I don't think anyone's expecting it to be cheap. In this entire area, your, your lowest prices are really in the low 300s, maybe high 200,000s for a single family home with you know condos and townhouses being a little cheaper and and those that kind of housing is accessible and with all kinds of like apartments to rent as well in this area from lake magdalene to carrollwood to west chase there are also a lot of gated neighborhoods and prices are going to go up quite a bit in a neighborhood like that you're looking more I mean, a lot of these gated neighborhoods, they're gonna be four bedroom houses with a pool and your prices are really starting around 500 and going up. Okay, now let's work our way around the map. If you can't tell from other videos, I really like maps. Okay, as we start working our way around the map, let's start at the bottom. Let's start with town and country. This area, I drive through it a lot along Tampa Road in and out of the city. It's, it's a mixed bag. It's, there's all kinds of rentals and homes available. There's a lot of industrial area. It borders a very industrial area of West Shore. So you get kind of hit or miss in terms of what it feels like in this area. This area is growing really, really fast. It has some decent schools, but it's kind of confusing. There are some really nice neighborhoods in this area once you kind of get back in there, but they are quite a bit older and you, you have some kind of unique neighborhoods that feel very 60s and 70s and are usually kind of smaller houses. You don't have a lot of big houses in this area, nor do you have a lot of very like consolidated neighborhoods that feel like nice and thoughtful. Okay, as we go north from here up into Citrus Park, Citrus Park's actually kind of similar with a little bit of newer development. You do have some more like gated neighborhoods in Citrus Park with some pretty big houses. And these are kind of everywhere. You'll just kind of drive down a main road like Gun Highway or Sheldon. And you see these kind of all over the place that they're not very big neighborhoods, but they're nice little gated neighborhoods. There's a pretty decent sized mall here in the Citrus Park area that kind of services this West suburb area. As you go east from Citrus Park, you go into Carrollwood, and I kind of lump Carrollwood and Northdale together, and locals get mad at me for that, but who cares? They're very similar areas. They are master plan communities that were built in the 60s and 70s, and they have more of like a, a home alone neighborhood kind of feel, if you know what I mean, like a more brick houses, houses don't look all the same as each other. There's a lot of very mature landscaping. It's a really nice area. It's an area that I would like to live in. As you get over into Lake Magdalene, it gets kind of confusing. It's, there's a lot of lakes over there. You can see on the map here and a lot of really big, beautiful custom homes. And then you have these like little neighborhoods that are around a lake with a lot of nice big homes, a lot of older houses in this area, but not a lot of houses in general. I was actually surprised to find out that the population in the Lake Magdalene area is around 30,000. That seems higher than I expected. That's quite a bit higher than West Chase, which is like 24 to 25,000. Okay, now let's go over to West Chase and Keystone. They kind of merge together in this one neighborhood, but West Chase is really like a master plan community. Everything feels really intentional. The community is like based around 30 something villages is what they call it. 
and each village is kind of its own neighborhood. Some of them are gated, some aren't. Some are very uniform, some are not as uniform. There's also apartments and townhouses and all kinds of properties like that. One of the ways that West Chase stands out to me is that it's built shopping and apartments into a lot of these little town squares, like the West Park Village and some other little areas like this. Some of these neighborhoods in West Chase overflow into the Keystone area, but then like this neighborhood, the Eagles, which I have some friends that live in, is a really nice neighborhood. It's in the Keystone area of the county, but it has Odessa addresses because Odessa also claims this area in some strange way. It, it's really confusing. I wish that this area was just considered West Chase because it feels like West Chase. If you exit to the, the neighborhood to the south, you're in West Chase. If you exit the neighborhood to the north, you're in Keystone and you're in like farm ranch area. That's what makes Keystone really unique though, is that it has some of these nice gated neighborhoods. And then it also has areas where each house has 10 acres and has animals and farmers markets. It feels very, very rural in this area and it's pretty undeveloped. You can see some of this footage that I got when the last big storm was on the way. I really like this specific area. This is actually right outside of the Eagles neighborhood entrance on the north side. And it doesn't feel like Tampa at all, obviously, but you're really just minutes away from Tampa and West Chase. This Keystone area is pretty expensive too because of the unique environment it creates where it feels very rural, but it's still very close to the city. It is very desirable. And since lots are also so big in this area, there's just not as many. It's a pretty big geographic area and it's one of my favorite areas in general because of this connection between the country and the city. Okay, some of the kind of key features just as we wrap up here about the West suburbs is they are suburbs, but they're really close to the city. They're also kind of in Tampa, but still really close to the beach. It is kind of the best of both. Another key feature is that the, a lot of the growth in this area really happened between the 60s and the early 2000s. So a lot of the styles are represented through those eras. All right, the next key feature that comes up in a lot of my conversations when people call me is that West Chase is kind of one of the areas that people want to live. And if you live in this area, you understand that oftentimes when you're young, you want to live in South Tampa or St. Petersburg. And then when you have a family, you want to live in a little bit more of a suburb. So you look at areas more like West Chase. And then one of the last big features of this area that I don't think people often think about is that it borders the area of West Shore, which West Shore is the biggest business district in Tampa. It creates the most jobs from one district of the whole city. So if you're looking to work in any of those industries, and that's not just like mall jobs and restaurant jobs. I have clients that are investment bankers that have offices in West Shore, and there's the stadium there, there's the airport there. There's a lot of jobs in that area. Hey, I hope you found this information useful. If you did, don't forget to subscribe down below. And if you have any specific real estate questions, don't hesitate to reach out anytime. Phone number and email are right there on the screen and in the description down below. We'll see you soon.